Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eglin, and I want to talk to you today about indexes and optimization. And that, and indexes and optimization is a really good field because when you're working with a database, you're really going to want to make sure that that database performs well. And essentially, if a database does perform well, it can be it can become useless. So, when you're looking at what we're going to cover today, um, really, what are indexes and why do we use them? Some types of indexes, creating them, and then some considerations you'd have to take into account when you work with indexes. So let's first look at why create indexes. Well, kind of alluded right to this, indexes are really there specifically to increase the performance of the database. And it's a little bit more complex than that because different kinds of indexes are specifically better for different types of fields. And when you're using a database, you have to have a little bit of an idea of how you're going to use the database to optimize that indexing. So we're going to look at that. Now, first, the cost of indexing, okay? Because nothing comes for free in this case. The indexes will increase the performance of the databases, but you have a cost. The really upfront cost is the creating of the index. So let's say, for example, you're going to uh, create an index which is essentially, let's say, sorting a row. Well, uh, or sorting, sorting a column. Well, the column isn't pre-sorted. You have to go through and actually do the, the action of creating this index and the index is a separate entity which is uh, pointing to this column and it's sorted so it has to be sorted also when you create an index you have to then tables are dynamic and databases are dynamic you're constantly inserting and updating deleting and selecting uh, when you create an index, you are going to have a specific cost whenever you need to insert or update the database because you also have to insert and update the index. So it's a little bit more complex there. Now let's talk a little bit about complexity. Um, well, when you're dealing with something like a table scan, complexity is um, often referred to and is what we call the big O notation. And in it would be the number of whatever it is that you have that you have to do al um, algorithmic steps. In this case, n in a database refers to the number of rows that you would have in a table. So suppose you have to scan an entire table. Let's look, like, let's look at this like we would with a phone book. Okay, suppose you opened a phone book and you're trying to find something and you start with the A's and you just go one by one by one by one until you find the name that you're looking for. Well, on the average, you're probably going to find it 50% of the way through the phone book. So that's basically half, you have to look at one half n. But the way complexity works is it looks at the actual absolute magnitude of n, basically the worst case scenario. So this uh, full table scan, which would be starting at the first row and going through all the rows until you find the match, would have the complexity of n. However, when you create an index, or let's say, let's say you would just simply sort the tables, and you create an index that's a sorted version of the tables. Well, how would you look for a number in a net phone book for real? Well, you probably open up the phone book halfway through the phone book, and you're probably going to end up, let's say, you know, right around the middle of the alphabet, say around N. And if it, the, the, the name you're looking for is before that, you're going to flip about halfway through the next one. Well, if you're doing this with a computer and you say, okay, let's first go to the middle and decide whether we need to go left or right. Let's say you go left and now you cut it in, in half again and you cut it in half again, and you cut it in half again, well, the complexity in that case is the log of n, which is a much smaller number typically than the n. So the complexity, computational complexity, is what we're looking at here, becomes much smaller when you create these indexes. So the case of a clustered index is you need to have an index that really does um, make it easy to have this sorting occur, and beyond that sorting occurring, you also have to have the ability to insert and remove rows relatively straightforward. So this is kind of a, a schematic of how a, the clustered index, this is one of the ones that's used by SQL Server by default when you create a primary key. And if you look at this, you'll notice that each um, row itself has this ability to point to the row before or after, but what it also has the ability to do is know that there's rows that are, that are basically leaves of the existing row. So if you were to go down from one and get to another and you're looking, let's say you're here and you look at this first one, okay, and, and this, is, this is pointing that you have these intermediate level rows, you can find out if something is actually in between this one here, let's say this one here, and this one here. 
Okay, uh, hopefully you can actually see that this one I'm pointing at, and meaning that there's going to be some that are down here, which is now a leaf node, and there can be ones that are in between. Well, if you're looking for something, let's say everything is between here and here, it's very easy to see that it includes these. And if there were other ones that were in, within here, you can see that it would include those also. And you can easily bring those back up. So a clustered index, which I'm not going to get into the details of the data structures that are associated with clustered indexes. Um, that actually, just like computational complexity, it is a, a topic for another class. But you can see that clustered indexes do have the properties of being relatively straightforward to put together with a, with a data structure that's relatively simple. So, when you create a primary key in SQL Server, you automatically are creating a clustered index. Now, you can create primary keys and specify that the primary key will not use a clustered index. It might use a non-clustered index. And there's all sorts of other types of indexing uh, algorithms that are available. What it does do is it adds a unique identifier to each row, and you can only have one clustered index per table. That's, those are very important considerations practically when you're creating tables and working with indexing. Now, these are very good for, for um, and really what you're going to look at is what you're going to use the table for. So if you're going to be doing select on a table and you want to return a range of value or a specific value, if you're going to return large data sets of, of things, if you're going to be able to, use, if you're going to do foreign key joins, foreign key joins work very well if you do them on clustered indexes or you're going to be using order or group by, those are all very good ways to, to use a clustered index. And if you think about that, the concept of a clustered index is very much like alphabetizing. Okay, If you're going to return a range, well, suppose you want to have all the B's in a phone book. Well, that's pretty easy to find. You just go to the B's, find the first one, find the last one, and everything in between. That's what a clustered index does. Okay, Or ordering or grouping makes it relatively uh, are very good there. So, what are they bad for? Well, um, there, is a, there is a cost with clustering, and, and Columns that are going to have a lot of changes are going to be very bad for clustering. Also, quest, uh, what we call basically big columns, columns with large amounts of text, are not really good for clustered indexes. And there are specialized indexes that are good for these types of scenarios, but clustered index is not one. So what kind of indexes do you have to look at? Well, um, unique index, which by the way, unique index is a clustered index, or the primary key, which also specifies uniqueness, is by default a clustered index. But there's also non-clustered indexes, and we also have this concept of filtered non-clustered indexes. What we mean by filtered non-clustered indexes is you can say, well, you know, I know I'm going to be querying on this specific group of, of rows all the time, so I'm going to create an index only on that group of rows because they're going to be used a lot. And you can create non-clustered indexes that are filtered that way. There's also a large number of specialized indexes here. Spatial indexes, which we probably will not be using in this class because you're, you're not using spatial databases, but that's indexes that are actually, how do you find things on a map? I mean, how, do you, how do you do map-based searches? Full-text index, which we, by the way, will be using uh, in COP 4709, which does require you to do some special steps to use a full text index, and then XML indexes, and that those are specially designed for being able to find rows, uh, or well, it, the concept of rows being a little different with XML, but find things within XML documents. And uh, SQL Server does allow you to work with XML documents and has XML indexing. So, looking at all this together. There's a lot of different types of considerations you may want to make when you're actually deciding how to optimize the database, especially using um, indexes. One is the concept of the fact that databases may exist amongst multiple servers and be partitioned in different ways. So if you've looked at the concept of maybe vertical or horizontal partitioning of your database, well, that's going to have to have a large uh, consideration when you actually think about how to index it because if you're going to be doing tables that are updated um, fairly regularly and you have the updating occur off from multiple partitions, that's going to have a large cost associated with this. So I think that uh, uh, what I really tried to, to accomplish with this lecture is for you to get an idea of the concept that indexing is something that can be dramatically improve the performance of a database. And with the other lectures on performance, you should have a good idea of how to go about you know, using reasoning skills to find optimal ways to uh, optimize your database, indexing being one of the great tools that you have available for you to do this.
Thank you very much. Good programming.